Welcome to the Digital HR Leaders Podcast. I'm delighted to be joined today by Lena Nair, Chief delighted HR Officer at Unilever. Welcome to the show, Lena. Delighted. Can you provide a brief introduction to your personal journey at Unilever um, and also how we help catalyze the use of data and technology within HR? Because I think it's fair to say that you're at the forefront of doing this. <laughs> <laughs> That's very kind of you to say that, David. Uh, I started off as an electronics and telecommunications engineer, believe it or not. Worked as a telecom engineer for three or four months, didn't enjoy it that much. Went on to do my management studies in human mm. resources and then realized I found my vocation and calling. But I always had a strong engineering brain inside of me, you know, as numerate, love problem solving, love the gadgets, love building stuff. So that sort of stayed in my uh, in the back of my psyche for a long time. And then I went on to do many things at uh, Unilever over the first five, six years. I did a number of roles in the business, manufacturing, production, employee relations, sales, and then did a number of roles across all aspects of human resources before moving to become the chief HR officer. I've done about 26, 27 years with Unilever, and it is, you know, I say I bleed blue because I truly enjoy every part of Unilever. What happened was, as I saw, uh, you know, there were two or three things that happened. One was that I increasingly began to feel that there was very little way of being able to say what's our impact as HR as a function. How does that really link to top line, bottom line of a company? How does that link to the purpose of a company? So there was this constant thing in my mind saying, how do we be able to show the impact of what we're doing? Yeah. And then... The world of digital tools, AI was exploding. And I somehow saw both these trends coming together, the yin and the yang coming together where human impact, you know, what is the real impact of what we do with Mm. human resources and how digital and data could amplify, could provide a window, a vehicle for that started coming together. So it was six or seven years ago and we set up our first data analytics function. I often jokingly say that, uh, for the first time in my career, I've gotten relevant because when I finished my, when I decided to switch from engineering to human resources, my father said, you know, why would you do that? Why would a bright telecom engineer go into human resources? Nobody cares about human resources and personnel. We're talking about 25 years ago when it wasn't even called human resources. And suddenly for the first time, I feel like my skills at being a thoughtful engineer and skills are truly caring about what people think and what it takes to get the best out of people is coming together in a powerful way. And the world of data, the world of uh, digital simplification is bringing those two worlds together. So yes, it's taken 26 years to get relevant, but I'm finally relevant. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to come back to talk about some of the stuff that you've done at Unilever. Yes. We're definitely going to talk about how you remain human in our increasingly technological world, you which I know is something, about that. Yes. something you're very passionate about. You know, I think there's a series of firsts as well. That yes. you, you were very modest about your um, your career at Unilever. You were the first uh, female CHRO in, 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 in the business, but also in India, I think, yes. when you led the, the, yes. the HRO. I was the there first well. uh, woman on the board of uh, Hindustan Lever, I think, first in 100 years or something like that. Yeah, I have had the privilege and burden of being the first woman at many things in Unilever. It's a privilege for sure, but it's a burden sometimes. I, I bet. <laughs> and we were both we both had good fortune to speak at the People Matters uh, yes, conference in India. Yes, it, it was fun. It was like fun. a it was almost carnival. Like a, it was a like homecoming fun. for you, almost, <laughs> wasn't it? And I think the crowds were really very kind. They were. They were, and today. and the passion is incredible. They were still there at eight thirty on a Friday night, yeah. which you just wouldn't get. In Europe and the yeah. US, that's for sure. And you said something that really, really struck me, actually. You said that HR needs to have more swagger, yeah. which I think is a great line. And what do you actually mean by that? What yeah. does HR need to do to be to be better, more yeah. relevant? You know, one of the reasons I so readily agree to come and speak to HR audiences everywhere is because I think the function needs inspiration and self-belief. Why do I say that? I mean, the number of conferences I go to where the questions I'm asked range from, do we have a seat at the table? Uh, you know, how can Scratch HR earn its place at the table? Uh, or, you know, how should we be in service of the business? It is so defensive, so apologetic. Most yep. of the questions are in this space. Do we yep. deserve it? Are yep. we good enough? You know, does a profession really need to have its place under the table, under the sun? And it just bothers me and it annoys me. See, we're staring at a time when... There's never been a greater need for businesses to understand human transformation. How do we get people to do their best? Mm. How do we get 
people to adopt digital transformation because I always say digital transformation is human transformation. It's not the gadgetry for heaven's sake. It's not the tools we can bring in. It's about adopting them, using them, changing your behaviors. So CEOs, business leaders, everyone's perplexed for the first time and engaged with, oh my God, what do we do about culture? What do we do about mindset? What do we do about rapid upskilling? True human issues. And this is the time when we as HR should be stepping up and saying, of course I have the answers, or at least I have the answers more than anybody else. Mm. And I'm going to try hell as hell is hard to find those answers. So this is the time we should be brimming with confidence, saying our time has come, the platform's here, let's grab it, let's go for it. Instead, more often, the HR teams I meet are crippled with self-doubt, crippled with what do I do, crippled with I don't know the answers, and that bothers me. That's why I say, HR, come on, function. This is the time to walk with swagger and confidence. If you don't have the answers, it's okay, we'll figure them out. Yeah. We'll pilot, we'll experiment, we'll learn from each other. We'll steal with pride, we'll make it happen. But this is the time to grab the platform the world is giving us, to grab the mantle that's there, and to take leadership, mm -hmm. lay the road for the business, and walk with swagger. And it comes from first having confidence that people are a real competitive advantage for the business, especially now, when every other source of competitive advantage is gone. Yeah. And if anyone can actually help the business prove that, it's it's HR Absolutely. with some of the data and technology that we can use but not replace ourselves with. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm so delighted with the whole world of data because for the first time, I don't have to just go and say, I think people make a difference and I think investment in people is a good thing. I have the numbers and the ROI to speak for it. Yeah. And that should give us confidence and swagger. So my urge, I, I really get annoyed sometimes when I get the question saying, do we really think HR should be at the top table? Does HR really deserve? What is HR really accountable for? God, don't be so self-indulgent. There's no time for all of this. You know, the business needs us, the world needs us. Believe that yeah. and walk with swagger and make that happen. Yeah. And I you think... You can see how passionate I am, David, about Well, no, no. And I think, and, and you know, with the work that you've done at Unilever, we can see that as well. Um, when we we were on stage together at COGX, I think, yes. in the UK back in June, and you talked about a number of highlights, a number of areas where you yes. use technology um, to help improve uh, various stages around the employee journey. Yes. So, I mean, can we talk about a little bit of that now? So, oh, for sure. Uh, certainly in, in recruitment, you, yes. you brought some technology in there. And why know, I like to see... Why uh, the selection pool, I think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We've digitized all aspects of HR. You know, for example, let me start with all elements of the recruitment, uh, all elements of the employee experience, every single bit. Yeah. So recruitment, okay. We've digitized the entire recruitment process. So young graduate comes in, all he or she has to do is take a couple of seconds to put their CV from LinkedIn, play games for 24 minutes at a time of their choosing, at a place of their choosing, break it up, play a couple of games one day, no problem. Send us a selfie video for 30 minutes, 40 minutes with some standard questions. And that's it. So, and then it's AI machine learning that allows us to see who fits best into Unilever yep. and also then have the pool of 3,000 people that we meet to select the 800 graduate trainees that we have. Okay. Now, we have 2 million people applying for Unilever. Hmm. Yeah. If I, even if I invest in hundreds and hundreds of recruiters, assuming I have unlimited capacity to invest in hundreds of recruiters, but now with what we're doing in digitization, we can talk to all of the 2 million people. So all of the 2 million people get a chance to give us their CV, play games, and give us a hell of a lot of data about themselves, interview with us, and be confident that they've had a chance to access this. In addition, every single person gets a detailed feedback about what their psychometrics were mm -hmm. from all the steps they participated in. And that is, to me, the power of digital. It helps to bring scale, but make it personalized. Yeah, you can not worry about scale, but use digitization to break the scale up so I can provide personalization focus to every single person who applies for Unilever. Ensure they get some feedback. Ensure like they feel they had participated in the process. So that's the beauty of digitization. Yep. That's one example. And it's helped, I think, with that particular example, it's helped you diversify the pool Yes. that you select from as well, isn't yes. it? The now, number of schools. Many supplementary benefits. One, you don't have to be restricted saying, 
hey, I don't have the manpower to go to more than 10 schools, 20 schools. You can say anybody can apply. Mm -hmm. So it suddenly opens up the pool. It has the supplementary benefits are, it gives us millions of pieces of data year after year. Yeah. That's honing in, who are we looking for? What are we looking for? It's allowed us to be far more inclusive. So in every dimension of diversity, our stats are getting better yeah. when the pool has been opened up and diversified. Yeah, whether it's social mobility, whether it's ethnicity, gender, disability, it's just opened it up. But it has helped for the accessibility, for the diversity, for getting data that's helping us understand better who's going to succeed in Unilever, who's going to fit better, who's going to bring some of the qualities we're looking for, and equally give a lot of people feedback about themselves, which helps them, if not in Unilever, somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. So that's recruitment. We have taken learning and done the same thing with learning. Okay? We've invested in Degreed, as you know, which creates all the internal and external material and gives people uh, everything that they can learn. So it's aligned to people's purpose. It's aligned to people's passion. It's aligned to how they learn. I like watching videos. There's a lot of videos. I also enjoy podcasts. So David, don't worry. I will listen to this <laughs> one. So <laughs> I will listen to your podcast. So it aligns it to the way people like to learn, mm. the time they like to learn. And we have such incredible insights. You know, the best time to learn is Thursday between 12 to 5 yeah. in different parts of the world. So that's the time we feed and staff. People are getting points. We know who the active learners in the business are. We can trace whether the active learners are improving their performance. So digitization allows you to get data that allows you to measure impact. That's like the supplementary benefit. It makes life easier. Yep. So suddenly, it's easier to learn when a personalized curated feed is coming to you every single day. It makes it so much easier to learn. So that's learning. We've then taken, in fact, I, I was in Africa, as you know, and I went to the East Africa business, and every person who was presenting to me uh, had on their slide a number, 3,250 or some such number. So I said, Guy, what's this? They said, those are degree points. We're having a competition who's going to have the highest degree points. <laughs> and the next day when I had the town hall, I recognized the people who are learning the most in the business. Mm. And I, that was so cool. And so there's a whole business of thousands of people sharing their points, competing with each other. Do you have more? Do I have more? It's fun. So it's unleashed. And so important in today's world where you need to, we need to be continually learning. Exactly. And therefore, I could see lifelong learning being ignited in that business, which is fantastic. Now, let's look at employee voice and listening. We've done a lot of digitization and all of that. We have you know, sentiment meters that allow us to have daily sentiment. I often, when you come to my office, you'll see these two beautiful big screens, which have now been photographed in many places. When real time, you're seeing the sentiment analysis yeah. of the company. So you don't have to wait once in a year for people to fill up 120 questions to know mm. what the business is feeling. You can get it in real time, pulse checks, any part of the world, comparisons. And with all the investments in language and um, being able to analyze thousands and thousands of comments succinctly into what's really the sentiment of people is a massive step forward that we can do with the power of AI. Well, so good because you can respond to things that are happening in different parts of the world and exactly. provide help to the local HR teams as well if they need it. Because exactly. Of something that's happened maybe in a, you wouldn't know about it otherwise. And no one's local help, not mm -hmm. trying to do one size fits all across the world, yep. but saying, hey, there's something going on in America that we need to pay attention to, something going on in Japan. So it's nuanced, it's relevant, it's locally contextualized, makes the impact of what we're doing so much better. Which is just like the Unilever commercial business. Yes. So you very much, you, yes. you adapt for the regions that you're yes. operating in. So. I don't know, David, I can go on. Another example, uh, flex experiences. Okay, We've tied up with GLOAT. What we said is people have some capacity to do things that they're passionate about. Mm. No surprises. You might be very busy, but if you're passionate about something, you'll find the time to do it. Ask me about Bollywood dancing every Tuesday, 6.30 <laughs> to 7.30. Off I go to do Bollywood dancing. People find the time to learn in areas they're passionate about. Mm. So what we've done is we've unlocked inner mobility within a company. What we've said is, if I have something interesting that I want other people to put their hands up for, I can put it on this platform. And if you have some time and capacity and you're interested in working on it, you can apply for it. Yeah. 
So it's a number of projects which need 10, 20 percent of your time, sometimes more, sometimes all of your time for six weeks, three weeks. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's a flexible way of working. And I was just stunned to see the numbers yesterday. 40,000 employees in Unilever on this platform. And we've unlocked thousands of working on things they're passionate about on top of their daily jobs, doing stuff that excites them. Mm. And, you know, and the people who received this are delighted because they've got people who are passionate about it, working with them on unlocking something for Unilever. So it's not something, you know, which is, you know, fringe. It's now mainstream. 40,000 yeah. people on this platform engaging with, hey, I need help for this. Hey, do you have somebody for this? Hey, does somebody have time to do this? Hey, does somebody have six weeks in September to work with me on something? And it's just unleashed this inner mobility. Again, the power of bringing true digital platforms into working with us. Una. Una is our internal bot. Everything that touches the employee. The first tier is Una. You've yeah. got to talk to Una. Yeah? Yeah. Una gives you answers. Una is a search capacity. Una is bot capacity. We have a mix of everything. And again, I was so delighted to hear yesterday that we've crossed a million searches wow. on Una. That's so, gone up because when your last surgery you speak, which is only at the start of It August, was half a million or yeah, yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. Something it's a million. Like and I told the team, please don't bother to send me any update notes till it hits a million. Yeah. So I get this sheepish note yesterday saying, Lena, it's hit a million. <laughs> so I said, okay, guys, now it's time to celebrate. Now we can get a cut. Now tell me how we'll make it 10 million. Yeah. You know, because you have to continuously learn, continuously upgrade. So Una is now the first port of call for everything that touches an employee life. Not just in HR, but across. You want to do your travel and expense statement? You go to Una and say, hey, Una, how do I, which system do I go to? What do I do? You want to order a computer? You want to, so it's, we're making it the one-stop shop yeah. to make an employee's life effortless. So we've taken away this whole infrastructure, giving savings to the business, giving effortless, new age way of uh, finding help to our employees. That's the power of digitization. And then again, the data, a million searches. What are people searching most on? The last time I checked, the number one question was still around payroll. Yeah. When is my salary slip coming? Has it come? Has my salary? Okay, tells you something. So it teaches you so much. Mm. What is going on with people? What do they search the most for? Why don't they have easy access to it? How can I make it more effortless? Because the joy of digitization is the joy of getting the data that allows you to see where you can have the greatest impact. It gives you the numbers to talk to business leaders about where HR is having an impact. It gives you the confidence and the swagger to work yep. out there saying, yep. I know the stuff we're doing is having an impact. Here's the proof. So it's really fascinating about, yeah. about Unibot, actually, because so many of the questions that we get asked in, yeah. in HR are the same question by, yeah. by various different people. And I think yeah. it's great that you're able to automate part of that process because the experience is brilliant for the employee, much better for the yeah. employees. Yeah. It's actually better for HR because yeah. you said it's good for the business because it, yes. it saves it can save money. Yeah. But also if you're one of those people sitting in the HR service centre, yes. now the questions that you're helping employees on are more specific and more yes. personal for them as well, which yes. I guess is so everyone kind of wins from it. Absolutely. What I'd be interested to hear though is some of the what is yeah. some of the feedback you've been having from employees about about you know what? I think it's a great question, David, because what I believe is a lot of this digitization should create the space for us to put people at the heart of everything we do. So one of the first things we did is we reframed our HR services to call it our people experience leads. Yeah. And we said, you are masters of the people experience. You are the people who are going to curate a great experience. All this technology is at your service and our service of our employees to make the people experience better. Yeah. So it's substituting the time that's spent in some of these things, which are painful. Where do I find my salary slip? What's gone on with this? Where you're still waiting for HR business partner to find the time to tell you what is the convenience allowance in London. You can find those quick answers yeah. Yeah. for the daily little things. But the time is being used by our HR people to create a fantastic people experience. So I will talk about digitization allows you to humanize better. I talk about it all the time. Digital revolution is the human revolution. If you digitize, it is to provide focus on human beings. Yeah. So let me give you an example. You know, when I was younger, which was a long time ago, <laughs> you know, I would go to the bank and, uh, you know, go to withdraw money. And I had a great relationship with a bank teller who would ask me about my father. I was studying in a town far away from my hometown. Great. I loved it. I loved all of that. But today... Will I give up internet banking? No, it's convenient. It's five minutes, I'm done. 
mm, being, mm. doing whatever I need to. Yeah? Because I want to use the space and time in my life to do some of the other things that I need yeah. space and time for. So it's a bit like that. I want the effortlessness of everyday things to be taken away by Una providing you the answers. But the people experience leaders and the HR business partners doing quality work to dial up human transformation in everything they do. So I want my HR business partners to spend more time doing stuff that increases the performance of individuals and teams and less about digging out information to give someone. Yeah. Answering some of the daily questions, daily things that actually harass you because you want an answer to something. So it's about doing both. Giving a digital experience that takes away the pain and makes stuff effortless yeah. to navigate, but equally giving you the space and time to do meaningful things that make a difference to our people. Yeah. So you've got to do both. You've got to do and both. that's why our people are very receptive because they know Una is not substituting everybody in HR. Mm. Una is substituting some of the t uh, difficulties they had with the call centers, some of the difficulties they had in finding simple information, while their HR business partners are there to provide them productivity and performance uh, insights and coaching. And people experience leads are available to do an end-to-end -end curation of the experience for them. This is interesting. So it's, it's augmentation, really, not automation. It which is, is augmentation, yeah. not substitution. Not substitution it's yeah. augmentation. And you talked about the peer, people experience leads, and I know there are several new roles that you've been creating yes. in HR to reflect yes. the new the new world yes. as such. And you talk about the effortless experience as yes. well. well. You know, as well as skills, what are yeah. some of the building blocks that you need in place in, in yes. HR to enable this as well and and, and to create yes. this business value for the business, but also the value for the, the employees as well? Yes. It's a great question. You know, we had 15 years ago gone into the centers of expertise, HR business partners, and, um, uh, you know, and uh, services model, like everybody yeah. else. Yeah. But I think the world has changed so much in the last 10, 15 years. And maybe I should ask Dave to now write a new book because I, I, I keep telling him that, I'm, you know, Yunli was going to write the next book on how to organize HR because it's the question on so many people's minds. So what we've done is we have broken the hard divide between expertise and HR business partner and begun to combine roles, saying you double hat an HR business partner in role, but you also lead a center of expertise. Yeah. Yeah. Or you lead somebody of uh, expertise. What we've also done is we have re-looked at the employee experience and we've created people experience leads who lead employees to the entire experience. So let me give you an example. An HR business partner works with a talent advisor. Yeah. So the good old recruiter of the old days is a talent advisor. He or she, their only job is not to go out and recruit, but to advise on talent, think end to end, internal talent, external talent. Yeah forecasted talent, organization design. So we've brought a high caliber of people who've come in as talent advisors. Okay? So an HR business partner is supported by a people experience lead and a talent advisor. So what happens is the HR business partner, say, takes a decision. They're going to move David Green from uh, UK to Ethiopia because that's the right move for you, for example. So the talent decisions are taken by the HR business partner, strongly supported by a talent advisor, strongly working with the business leader. So the mm -hmm. advisor gives the perspective and the decision is taken. David Green is now going to move to Ethiopia. Then that is handed over to the people experience lead. Yeah. The people experience lead then becomes a single point contact for David to navigate him and his family through every of part of the experience. Yeah. How do you plan to move? What happens to your family? Schooling, children, da, 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 everything that's on your mind. And provides a seamless experience there's a hell of technology supporting the people experience person. Hell of a lot of technology. Yeah, there's Una, of course. There's other things that's supporting them to be able to give a smooth. There's a total reward system, which is the technology we brought into reward to help you understand your package better. There's everything. But for David, the effort is seamless because he or yeah. she doesn't have to worry at this critical moment in his life about how do I make this happen. Because yeah. someone's yeah. doing everything, your tax situation, your... You know, what do you need to do? You removals can imagine and, removals yeah. and everything end to end is exp that. And the people experience leader is measured for the customer satisfaction alone. Did David at the end of the day, on a scale of zero to five, say, wow, that was delightful. 
It was effortless. It was delightful. That's what people experience leaders are for. Uh, talent advisor, people experience leads are new roles we've created. And like I said, HR business partner, we're also experimenting with um, not dedicating HR business partners to one function, one part of the business, but to flowing them to critical change projects. So if there's a massive change project in the company, we will flow three or four HR business partners to work as partners to this massive transformation. So people stop thinking like, I am partnering customer development function and that's all I think about. Yeah. But now seeing end to end, how am I integrating all of this and having change it impact? Because one of the things in HR that was happening is everything was getting siloed. Yeah. I'm an HR business partner. I'm an HR business partner for this part of the business and that's all I'll think about. I'm talent expertise and I think and breed talent and I do nothing else. So we're making much more fluid, double-hatted, flowing to work, which I think is the future of HR. Well, it's interesting you say because we, you know, I know Nikki Clement quite well, who leads your organisation, performance and people analytics. I think that's the role. Organisation, people analytics. All right, yes. Morris got it OPA. right. OPA. OPA. And um, one of the things she, 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 I've seen her speaking about that really impressed me was that exactly that. Yes. One of the big challenges around people analytics is yes. how do you enable the rest of HR to ask the right questions, be exactly. comfortable with data. And she explained exactly that. that yeah. There are certain HR business partners now who have a, a second hat, as it were, for people analytics. So they're almost an extension of the team. Yes. So they're helping to create that culture. But the second point, they're also actually helping the rest of the HR business part in the community Correct. get on board with analytics as well. Absolutely. So we're using the power of networks to learn. So, for example, employer brand or people analytics, like Nikki said, we would have a central, very small team mm -hmm. that is building deep expertise, that is talking to the experts of the world and bringing the best of the best to Unilever in our HR laboratory in Kingston. I don't know if you've had a chance to see. But it's a very small team. Mm -hmm. But they have a network of people across the world who are passionate about this, who are part of the community of practice, who are double-hatting this responsibility for their market or their geography, and are bringing the strength of this community to equip everybody in the function. So it's a much more fluid way of working, much less dedication, hardwired silos, yeah. much more integration fluidity. I can tell you, we're experimenting. Yeah. And I really hope all of this works. There is energy in the function. People like this way of working. So I hope to be able to convince Dave to write the next book on this. Well, funny you should say that. Actually, we'll talk about that afterwards. But, um, but it's interesting. You talk about remaining human in a digital world. And that's yes. one of the when every time I've seen you speak at conferences, the big message that comes out. Yeah. Um, how do we do that? How do we use this technology and, and remain intrinsically human? And yes. I know you've done some really good research, for example, into the use of wellness and yes. stuff, too, which would be good to hear about as part yes. of the answer. But yeah. You know, um, I've as the world is getting more connected and digitized, I'm delighted and very optimistic about it. It's changed my own life. I feel like I can be part, be part for my parents, my children. It's made our world feel smaller, which is great. And I've given you numerous examples of how digitization is making life yes. effortless, making life more personalized for people to create space to do more human things. But equally, I worry about the disconnection. So as we get more connected, we're getting more disconnected as human beings. Yeah. The, um, the rate of stress in the workplace is going up. Mm. There were 40% enhancement in cases reported of anxiety in the US this year. The UK has announced a minister for loneliness. Loneliness, feeling miserable, depression, anxiety. These are becoming big problems for society today. Mm. So with all this connection technology we have, we are becoming disconnected as humans. And it really worries me. So I feel very passionately that as you digitize more, you have to humanize more. As you think about digitization, you have to think about how am I making it really human. So what are we doing in Unilever with the space and time we are creating through digitization to do the human things? One of the first things we're doing is we're ensuring every single person has an opportunity to go through a purpose workshop, to discover what they're passionate about, what they're purposeful about, what gets them out of bed. So 40,000 people have been through these workshops. They love it. You talk about your crucible moments. You talk about what shaped you. And you think about what your purpose is. What is that really you love about what you do? Or what is that you love, which you would love to do and don't get an opportunity to do it today? The second thing we've done, because, uh, we've done is put huge investment behind wellness. 
physical, mental, purposeful, emotional. You've got to take hashtag self-care. You've got to take care of yourself. Because if you're not feeling well, you can't be at your best. You can't do the things you feel purposeful about. And for me, it even makes such business sense because for every dollar we invest in well-being, we're getting a return of two and a half dollars. Yeah. I mean, what business case do you need? I mean, what would I love return that statistic, by the way. It's yeah, a fantastic it data point. It really is. And, and, you know, so we invest in well-being because our belief is if people know their purpose, they get anchored in a world that's moving fast. If they feel well, they have the strength and the ability to cope with these unprecedented changes. Otherwise, change feels scary, change feels anxious, change feels lonely. And we feel that if... They are learning all the time. They feel skilled. They feel capable. So they feel more confident. I have the skills. Yeah, I'm not worried because I have the skills to manage in this world. So to humanize our agenda, we put huge focus behind purpose, well-being, and continuous lifelong learning. Massive investments in, in doing this. Yeah, And these are the things that are helping to create a more human world, even as we digitize the way employees engage with HR and the way HR engages with the company and the world. So for me, both have to go hand in hand. Yeah. We are leading human resources for this, for companies, for institutions. We have to push for humanization of the agenda. We have to push for ensuring that investments behind people is happening. We have to push for it. And we can push for it today with greater swagger and confidence because we have the data that supports us to tell the story. Yeah. I'm not asking anybody apologetically mm. to put money in behind wellness because, oh, it's a nice thing to do and you never must care about its people. I'm saying, guys, the number is $1 invested, $2.5 return. Do you want to do this? You know, you don't upskill. This is the price you pay. You upskill, you can reduce recruitment by X percent because, you, you know, we've done some numbers. We can reduce recruitment by 6.6 .6 million. If hmm. we invest in reskilling a little more. So you've got to have these numbers, the statistics, this impact to be able to tell that business story. But we have to drive for keeping human at yep. the heart of the digital agenda. And if we don't do it, who will? No one. And I think that's a great future for HR, yeah. purpose, well-being, yeah. continuous learning, backed up with the technology and data to show that it makes business value as well as employee value as well. Absolutely. And the other piece of the humanizing agenda is inclusion. Because the other things that gives you confidence is when you feel like you belong. Yeah. You belong to a community, you belong to a company, your voice is heard, your story matters. When you feel included, you feel well. And you feel like you can live your purpose. You can feel like you can bring your best. So it's purpose, well-being, learning and inclusion. These are the four things we're doing to truly humanize the agenda even as we are digitizing into it. So, Lena, thank you. It brings us to the question that we ask all our guests on the show. And I think you've covered it yes. throughout the conversation yes. today. Yes. So maybe it's a summary now. Yes. What, what do you feel the, the role of HR will be in 2025? Yes. yes. It's a great question. David, I'm optimistic and excited about the future of HR. So let's start from there. Yeah. I believe HR will be the function that lays the road for the business and that sees the future and connects it to what's happening internally better than any other function. So I see HR as a leading function that's bringing the strength of what's happening externally, connecting it to what's happening internally, because you know the voice of everyone internally, and connecting it and helping business choose its strategic options and the actions that it needs to take. That's one. The second is I see the world of human capital and financial capital coming very closely together. So whenever we look at where are we going to invest money in, where are the big choices the business is going to make, which big opportunities the business is going to chase, we will immediately look at what is the organization and people readiness to make that decision yeah. happen. So it happens as an integrated collective decision where money and people decisions are taken together in an integrated way to give the organization the best chance of success. A third area is I see HR leading the human revolution, which is the biggest bit of the digital revolution, changing behaviors, changing mindsets, changing culture, changing adoption of all these technologies. So I see HR playing a leading role in leading for the human transformation that underpins digital transformation. 
The fourth is I see HR being a catalyst for human shifts, yeah? cultural shifts, human behavior shifts, capability shifts of a high order. I see HR playing a huge role in being a catalyst for igniting that sort of learning, igniting well-being, igniting the human pieces in a big way. So I see a very exciting and optimistic future for HR because I believe that people will be the only competitive advantage a company has. Everything else can be matched. R&D ability can be matched. Supply chain can be matched. Money, not even an issue if we have the right idea. The mm. amount of money chasing limited number of ideas is massive. But it's people, their passion, their ideas, the difference they make. And HR playing a key role in being catalyst to unleashing that. And then I will feel like I've truly lived my purpose, which is to ignite the human spark to build a better business and a better world. Well, that's fantastic. And what do you think, David? Well, do you I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think one of the points that you were making there about yes. human capital and financial capital coming close together, yes. I really see that. You know, McKinsey talk about the G3, yes. the group at the top of the company, the CEO, the CFO, yes. and the CHRO. Yes. And I think you're right. And I, I, I think HR can only do that if it has more confidence, as you say, yeah. has more swagger, harnesses data and analytics, yes. um, and actually thinks and puts the employee at the center of what it does, which I think is very different from how we've operated yes. HR in the past, where maybe we haven't put the employee at the center of our thinking at all. Um, so I'm excited about the future of HR. I know there's a lot of doomsayers out there. I think as lot, I think the function will become a little bit smaller, Yeah. Um, but its importance will, will increase for all, for all the reasons that you give. And obviously I'm kind of operate really within the people analytics space and obviously Unilever is an exemplar of, of, of how to create um, yeah. more, more data, use the data like you have for, for that, that wellness. Yeah. You know, understanding the return on investment of wellness is, is fantastic. I wish more companies would do it. Um, but using the so much data we collect yeah. within HR to A, link that to business value so we can actually show the value of what we do. Uh, but secondly, so that we can actually use that data to personalize and improve the employee experience. I think that's a fantastic opportunity. Mm. I also think it's a responsibility um, for us in HR. Um, I don't know if you've read the book that Jeffrey Pfeffer published last year, Dying yes. for a Paycheck. Yeah. Literally, the data there tells him that our workplaces are literally killing people. And yeah. you know, we can't continue with that. And as I said, by putting wellness as, as, as you are at the center of that, by putting continuous learning at the center of that, and by putting inclusion at the center of that, we can really help improve the workplaces for our employees, yes. but we can also create more business value from it as well. So, so I'm really excited about yeah. that. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to answer a question as well. So lastly, how can people stay in touch with you? Yes. And please, as part of your answer, just to us a little bit about the Learn With Lena initiative. <laughs> you know, I am very, very passionate about getting my voice out there for many reasons. One is that, we can't talk digitization to the world and not be comfortable being on social media or using these digital platforms. So I am trying to put out there, I'm making a hell of a lot of mistakes, but I'm learning a lot. Uh, and I'm also keen that HR as a function walks tall. And that means leaders in the function today who have the privilege to be in this function leading it have to step out there and yeah. inspire the function to greatness. So for all those reasons, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram. I'm really trying hard, despite the embarrassment of my children who tell me, please get out of Instagram. It's really embarrassing. <laughs> I'm putting myself out there, learning some lessons, getting trolled, getting criticism sometimes, but really hanging in there. So we started this Learn with Lena initiative as another experiment and pilot on LinkedIn, where I get to speak to interesting people like you. I get to learn from them, and I want to share that learning more widely. Mm. I want to do that to role model learning, that continuous learning is part of all our jobs. No, no, none of us can say we've arrived, we've learned everything we need to. No, no. All of us have to say with humility that perhaps what I learned is not relevant anymore. I need to learn new things. So it is to role model that, that we are all learning at all times, that we have to challenge what we learned in the past and learn new things. We've got to open our mind to all sorts of influences and to share that learning more broadly that we started Learn with Lena, where I feature people like you and others and learn very publicly and share it very publicly. So please follow me on LinkedIn, on Learn With Lena, on Twitter, on Instagram, and I would be delighted to hear the voice of 
all the HR leaders out there and all the business leaders who have a passion for people. That's fantastic. And we'll include all the various links to Selena's social media in yes. the, the copy that goes with the podcast if you're listening to this. So, yes. Lena, you continue to be an inspiration to the <laughs> profession uh, and you're certainly an inspiration to, to us here at My HR Future as well. So thank you for joining me for the podcast today and uh, I look forward to seeing you at another conference soon. He says it's been a pleasure. It's been a real pleasure, David. Thank you, Lena. In this series, we will be speaking to a range of senior leaders who are pushing a data-driven and digital HR agenda. Make sure that you subscribe by your podcast app of choice and also via our YouTube channel for free and regular interviews with the digital HR leaders of the future.